Greetings and welcome to Lizard Creations. Today I'm going to show you how I mix my epoxy resins, apply them to my bowls, and get a glass-like finish. This is a spalted birch bowl that's had two coats of resin on it and now I have to prepare it for its third coat, so I have to give it a light sanding. I'll start off by sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. The purpose of the 220 grit is to give the cured resin that's on the bowl now a bit of bite so that the last coat of resin will have a better bond. Once I've completed the sanding with the 220 grit, I'll convert to the green Scotch-Brite pads just to clean it up a little bit. And finally, I will use a microfiber cloth to wipe all the dust off. It's then ready for the resin. The first step of my mixing process is to flatten the end of my stir stick with a slight bevel on it. That allows me to mix right into the corner edges of my cup. Before I get started, I'll put rubber gloves on just to keep the resin off of my hands. I always start off by putting the hardener into the cup first. Next I will put a mark on the cup at the level of the hardener. That gives me my reference on where I should add my epoxy resin. The epoxy resin that I use has equal parts volume of resin and hardener. The epoxy resin sinks to the bottom. I can then tell exactly when I have the same amount of resin as I have hardener. This way I only need one cup to mix my epoxy resin. You can see how the hardener floats on top of the epoxy resin. I now have equal amounts of both hardener and epoxy resin because they both were filled to that line. When I stir my resin, I don't swirl. I go back and forth side to side. That prevents an air cavity from forming behind the stir stick allowing bubbles to form. It takes longer to mix the resin and hardener but there's far fewer bubbles. I know that a lot of manufacturers tell you how long to mix the resin. I don't go by that. What I do is look at the resin itself. I want to make sure there's no swirls in there and it's pretty much crystal clear like water by the time I'm finished mixing. In fact, I'll mix a little extra time sometimes after it looks like water just to get some tiny bubbles out of it. I still have swirls, but they're slowly disappearing. The only time I go around in a circle is to scrape the edge of the cup. Other than that, it's always a side-to-side -side motion. I have very few bubbles in here. It is becoming clearer. I do use a food-safe epoxy resin for all of my bowls. Now by food-safe, that doesn't mean that you can put hot soup or hot coffee in it. It means at room temperature, food can make contact with it. As a general rule, Epoxy resins will start to soften around 140 degrees Fahrenheit. There are high temperature resins out there that can withstand higher temperatures, but that's a general rule of thumb that I've come across. I can still see swirls in the cup looking down from the top. The resin I use has a 30 minute pot life at room temperature. The larger the volume of resin that you mix, the faster it will cure. Because it is thermal setting, the higher volume produces a higher temperature and it sets faster. You can see that it is getting clearer. 
when you scrape the edge of your cup sometimes there's a ridge in the bottom of the cup and I have to raise my stir stick above that ridge so that I get good contact with the edge of the glass when I am stirring it. Of all the resin I've ever mixed, doing it this way, I've never had a failure. It's always cured. By putting the hardener in first, and then putting the epoxy resin, pouring it through the hardener, the hardener will always make contact with all of the epoxy resin, and the resin can't stick to the sides of the glass. That is where you'll get issues with resin not curing properly. If you don't scrape it off the edges thoroughly enough, you'll have soft spots in your resin or resin that hasn't cured. There you go, it's finished mixing. Now I can start applying it. I apply my resin with a very thin polyester brush. I find that a thicker brush or a brush that has any kind of fluffy end on it will produce more air bubbles. So I go with a thin polyester brush and apply my resin that way. I want to put on an even coat. I work the resin quite a bit just so that it smooths out and, e I, and I have an even coat. The last step is to watch for bubbles. I'll take a torch and just quickly pop them. I have to watch the bowl for quite a while to make sure I get all the bubbles. I'll probably spend a half hour popping bubbles. They're very tiny bubbles, but I don't want them on my bowl. When you're popping bubbles, it's best not to overdo it. Wait a while between attempts to pop them. You don't want to make the resin hot. A little bit warm helps it flow a little bit, but you don't want to make it too hot. This is the finish on the outside of the bowl. The resin hasn't cured yet, but it is a nice finish. I will let it keep rotating on the rotisserie for six hours until the resin is cured enough that it will no longer run. The bowl is now finished. It has a crystal clear, glass smooth, bubble free finish. And on the bottom I have my label. As per usual, at the end of each of my videos I showcase two of my wife Elizabeth's paintings. And the two for this week are... The first painting is Sunset Beach. It's an 18 by 24 mixed media. It includes acrylics, resin, stone, paper, and glitter. The second painting is Rio, which is an 18 by 24 mixed media enhanced pour. Check out our other paintings at lizardcreations.com. And remember, have fun, be safe, and create a remarkable treasure.